Good evening, and welcome to this Tuesday recording of Wednesday in the Woods in the Learning Loft. Today, we're going to be talking about how to understand worth. We want to answer the question, what is something, in particular an asset, worth? And to do that, we're going to look at three different frames or approaches that are commonly used. The first is to understand the cost to create something. It's important to remember that in valuation and when asking about something's worth, it's always, as they say, in the eye of the beholder. It's relativistic. So a seller may have at some point in the past incurred some costs to create an asset. Those costs may have included research and development. They may have included some initial setup of some production capability. And they may include any kind of marginal uh, cost per unit, such as raw materials or labor. Those analogies seem like they're focused on physical asset production, but in many ways, the analogy carries through to the development of things like software and data as well. The buyer may or may not have a similar experience. So if a seller spent a million dollars developing a product and bringing that product to market through the capability of producing something like software, then the buyer may or may not be able to do that for a million dollars. If the buyer is larger and more efficient and has access to uh, more sophisticated research and design and more efficient developers, then perhaps the buyer could create the same piece of software for less. On the other hand, the buyer may struggle to understand the design of the asset. It may take them some time in research and development. Trial and error may extend for a long period, introducing not just financial issues, but timeline risk. The seller has already incurred that research and development cost. It's known, whereas the buyer needs to make a decision based on an estimate of the cost to design or research a product. Similarly, even if the, the potential buyer of an asset understands the designer has access to a design, they may not have the capability of producing it for reasons that include scarcity of resources or uh, lack of, of uh, technical know-how. The next approach to understanding worth has to do with financial value created. So a seller with an asset today may be using that asset to create some kind of cash flow or to reduce another expense. In one case, the seller may be licensing a product like a piece of software or data. In other cases, the seller may be using software to reduce the cost of performing some service. The seller does that under a certain brand and with a certain set of activities in its organization. If the brand of the buyer or if the activities of the buyer are not identical to the seller, then the financial value created for the buyer is likely to be different than that from the seller. The larger the difference between these two, and the larger the difference between these two, the more likely there is to be a market between the buyer and the seller. In other words, if the seller spent a million dollars, if their basis for a product is a million dollars, but the asset is worth five million dollars to the buyer, then it makes sense that the buyer should spend or should be willing to spend more than the basis that the seller is in for to have produced the asset. In other words, the buyer would rationally spend $2 million to purchase an asset that the seller had created for $1 million. The seller would net $1 million over their basis. Very simple model, right? On the other hand, the seller may have spent $1 million creating the asset, but may currently be receiving $5 million in, in an excess margin or an enhanced margin as a result of the use of the asset. In this case, if the buyer could rebuild the asset for $5 million, but the current financial value to the seller is $5 million, then it's unclear what would happen. Potentially, the buyer could scale their activities so that the uh, technology efficiencies created by the asset would create more than $5 million in excess margin. 
but that would require that we understand the value of an asset in combination with the other activities of an organization. The third approach to understanding worth is to look at market values. These are observable prices in a market. And in many contexts, we need to rely on indirect comparables. We have to take one or more companies that are not quite the same or one or more assets that are not quite the same as the one we're looking at and we need to adjust them so that we can make a direct comparison with an asset. In some cases, there may be direct comparables and we may be able to use them uh, as proxies to price themselves. But in most cases, we end up needing to develop a model, often heuristic models, in some cases, more detailed models. Now, when we look at worth and value, in these three approaches, it's important that we understand a number of other considerations that can come into play. So assets may depreciate. They may have a useful life, and over time, they may simply be worth less on account of use or on account of changes in market. Similarly, discount and interest rates need to be taken into account. If someone spends a million dollars 10 years ago, the time value of that money is no longer a million dollars in present value today. The Input cost and output value related to an asset may change themselves or the volatility of these inputs and outputs may change. And to the extent that producing an asset or using an asset require financing, then changes to the cost of capital may impact the valuation. And subsequently, changes to taxation may change the, uh, the willingness of others to acquire the asset or to use the asset. In addition, there are a number of reasons why assets in some cases cannot be easily used or transferred or values cannot be uh, assessed. These often have to do with market access and lockup, the existence of trade secrets related to a product or asset, and the existence of patents related to an asset. In cases such as these, the party holding the asset, using the asset, often has uh, a number of ways to prevent or hinder others from understanding the total value that could be created by the asset. So the reason that I wanted to bring up worth and value and price and cost is that in the modern world, we are increasingly relying on software and data. But unlike most other forms of assets that we have used in business over the last 100 years, we have very little experience valuing software and data. There are many outstanding questions when it comes to appropriate valuation of these assets. And I think we're only just now beginning to fully appreciate how important it is to understand what is in software or data that we are building, buying, or selling. And with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of your week, and we'll see you again next week on Wednesday in the Woods, this time in the woods. <laughs>